that's great. Just blow right by the cops doing 90K. I knew that we hadn't done anything wrong. I wasn't speeding or anything like that. He looked at my passport, looked at my shirt, looked at the surfboards, and his buddy across the street was holding the radar gun and goes, oh, Tiana's stickers. There's some stickers. <laughs> it worked out great. It was fun. They were cool. They laughed. They smiled. Didn't arrest us. Where do you come from now? Where from now? Woo, see you there. Guys, think about sex six times a day. Some study said that. Well, I read that, and it was women are like twice as much. Viva Costa Rica! <laughs> the surf here was was actually very user friendly. It definitely is paradise. Whether you're here in Costa Rica or wherever you're at, you gotta go with the flow. San Diego is, is primarily an oasis in a desert for the most part, so it's really brown a lot of the time. And so coming here, it was it was kind of a culture shock in a way because it's just so green. Drive down to Pavones. That part was easy. You know, that was the first part of our journey. You know, getting in the car for the first time and just and driving around and we hadn't surfed yet. We couldn't wait to see waves. Couldn't wait to see the ocean. Couldn't even wait to see what kind of way we were going to surf. So. Just to like get in the car and go somewhere, load up the car and uh, you know, didn't matter how long it was going to really take us to get somewhere and or what kind of roads it was going to take us to get there. Uh, it's after an eight hour bumpy ride, you pretty much are ready to bed down and so arriving to some place that promised us a bed, you know, when we got there, and then when we got there they didn't, they didn't have that bed that they had promised, you know, it was a little... Uh, <sighs> Disappointing, I guess. We had to go with the flow on that. It's pretty neat that uh, you could wiggle back down the street and stumble into a local's home, practically, you know, like La Pina, and, and get the local flavor and support the local people here in Costa Rica. I thought it was a much better thing that we spread our money amongst the Costa Ricans. La Pina itself was just bitching. You know, they were very friendly and they had coffee for us every morning great warm welcome, it really was. The simple fact was that we were actually going to be finally getting into the water here in Costa Rica and uh, that was the excitement of it.
waves themselves were bitching, you know. Great, great waves. Just surfed them really fun backside lefts, you know. Snuck around on the inside corner. There was waves that swung wide, and we got 200 yard long lefts out of that, and that was the end of the wave. We were able to go out in the water, paddle around and catch waves consistently without cutting people off, without people, you know, cutting us off or even, even having to like really surf around anybody in the water paddling out because we were doing our own thing. You know, and uh, to be able to go to a point like that surrounded and, and clustered with that many people and get waves off to the side, unbelievable. absolutely firing. When you go on a surf trip, okay, you're always worried about what's going to happen to your stomach, you know, what am I going to eat? I need to have this energy and I, I need to have all this good food in my system so that I can surf. Before I got to Costa Rica, everybody was like, oh yeah, it's a lot of rice and beans. So our first place that we actually ate at was La Pina. <laughs> <laughs> First thing we ordered was pizza, pepperoni pizza. Karaoke. Well, here's the deal about karaoke in foreign countries. The best part about it is it doesn't matter what you sound like. What you look like. You know, I think it actually kind of helped me with my Spanish. More cerveza. My board worked great, actually. I was, uh, I was really stoked. Uh, it handled pretty much any situation that we encountered here in Costa Rica. The pintail, I think, was a good choice. I was down here, I brought myself a pintail nose rider and from that design that I was making then to what I've made now, I've refined that to where I couldn't wait to get on something that lined up and went forever to see how long I could stay there on the nose.
Yeah, we did see a bunch of iguanas. Some of them were a little more sketchy than others. Others just kind of hung out. Green, brown, big, small. first got there, the first two days, it was absolutely firing. Um, and I think I blew it by not going up the top of the point and trying to race through it all. I didn't want to because there was 150 people roughly scattered out throughout the entire point. I'm on a longboard, and if I'm, if I'm going to go somewhere, I'm not going to paddle on top of people. Definitely not for the weak hearted. It's for the rugged. I mean, you definitely just can't take your family out here and expect to have a nice family vacation. Tosquito Lodge was uh, pretty interesting. Our guy that we had was 19 years old or something, you know, Clyde, and he spoke fluent, perfect English, uh, great grammar, and was well educated. Cecropia trees and balsa trees, you know, yep. they make circles. Yep. Those are fast growing trees. He wanted to show us the jungle. He wanted to teach us about the jungle, and he knew about the jungle. Those are termites. Termites, is that That's what those are? What they are. Oh, yeah. Wow. so hard. He explained everything thoroughly, gave us a great tour, and not only that, you know, it was so easy to hang out with. And then the water pools were, you know, after that long hike up the mountain and then going back down, uh, you know, we were just hot and those 
fresh water, cool pools are really, really good. I feel good. I asked Clyde, have you ever been in that pool? He's like, no, it looks a little too danger for me, he says. And uh, so I was like, oh, okay. So then I started feeling a little uneasy because I'm sitting in these pools, you know, and you're looking, and all these little crawfish are crawling all over your feet. So now you're looking for the big ones, you know. And so we got up to like the third pool, and he caught this claw that was sitting on the side. And the claw was like, God, what was it, five inches long? So right then and there, I pretty much had my feet up and out of the water at that point. really cool but to be able to stumble on someone like Alan because basically we did we stumbled on Alan and he had a legitimate enthusiasticness about him we first got there and was just like oh my god you know love gee you guys are gonna go surf now again I just got out of the water you know it's a little windy but I'll go out again just to be with you guys and that kind of enthusiasm and stoke that he had for us was something that we had for him and to, to be able to, to share that back and forth between us was unbelievable
I know that. I have nothing against anybody. But, you know, longboarders have, more, have fun. more style. I mean, more fun, more man. More style more than more that's fun. that. There's more no fun. question. I'm not even, you know, if anyone wants to argue with me on that, they can leave. You know, you know I, short board is a great short board. It looks, it looks the same as the next great short board. They're all busting these big moves. And I can't tell one from the other. That's interesting. A good long board, two good long boarders, I can tell them from half a mile away. He cooked us a traditional style dinner for down there. And uh, it was really good. And God, we hung out with him for hours. To go to his house and to see what he's created, the aura and um, image around him, I was a pot smuggler back in the 70s, and, uh, and when I got out of that business, I decided I wanted to write about it, and I was, well, I immediately knew that the only way I could like write about it is if I made it a ridiculous comedy, and that's, okay. what, you know, you tell by the title, this is not real serious, but right, right. Cosmic Banditos, it was pretty weird. Um, but mainly, uh, back in those days, I was writing screenplays and TV for most of the 80s. Miami Vice. It's, it's amazing. I mean, he's a great guy, just just a wonderful person, you know. In Search of Captain Zero uh, is actually a, not only a memoir, but you know, in other words, my, my history. But it has a lot to do with surfing, you know, from when I started in the '60s up until now. I finished the script for Captain Zero for Radar Films and Sean Penn, and I don't know what's going to happen. Now they're saying they're going to have Brad Pitt play me. <laughs> well, that's great. Uh, I don't think he's good looking, though, personally. I read his uh, story in Surfer's Journal about Pavones. And I still have fun. You know, I write for Surfer's Journal once in a while. And, and he's got a lot of stories to tell. Yeah, you know, I did have a certain amount of not give it up. You know, I can do this yep. even when all else was failing, you know. So I give myself that credit, but there was also a lot of luck. You know, I can live here and surf every day in these ways. You know, I'm blessed. Alan was going to go to the United States for a month, and for him to like say, "All right, I've got a week here in the country. I've got a little bit of stuff going on here at my house, and you know, some business things that I have to take care of here, and these things got to take time." He pretty much scrambled to get all that together to jump on this trip with us, and then his car breaks down. I almost saw that coming, but it came a little sooner than expected. Oh, dude, transmission blows. He basically asked, he says, why now do I have two problems? I had a brake problem and now I have a transmission problem and why does it all happen now? Just the fact that all the vehicles down there are beat up, you know, really, for the most part, because of the roads and the rocks and, 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 and the washes that you have to drive through, it really puts a toll on the vehicles. You'd think he would X out the trip, sorry guys, I can't go, you know, it's going to be five people in that car, seven surfboards and all this extra luggage, I don't know how we're going to figure it out. But Alan just looked at it as another adventure. You know, he's an adventure man. And he looked at it and went, wow, you know what? Let's see if we can do this. And just, just the simple fact that he was like able to leave his car behind, which isn't a lot to a lot of people, but it, it would be to a lot more people, I think, to be able to just turn his head and go, well, hopefully I'll see my car in a month. I'm not too worried about it. I'll come back to the mechanic. Oh, I don't even know who this guy is that's gonna work on my car. Here's all the paperwork. And just to, to bail that and go on a surf trip, Pretty damn cool. This is going with the flow. I hope I never see it again.
But it all worked out. I mean, the uh, gear that we had really was a trooper with all the boards on there. The Minical. We found this hostel, and just, that place was pretty rugged. It's one of those places that you make a quick stop into, basically. That's it. Um, there was a beach break that had some really decent surf in the morning that we probably could have gotten into and had a lot of a lot of fun, but. Um, it was, a, that's all it was, it was an isolated beach break. It was a great place to stop in, hang out there, and uh, get the heck out of there as soon as possible. Bow your head. Costa Rican driver's license. Are you impressed? Boca Barranca, after driving pretty much all day the previous day to Dominical, then going to sleep in the hostel, then getting back into a cramped car and driving, what was it, another three, four hours? I was excited to get into the water because I really needed to get a surf to wash off uh, the dirt and dust. And as soon as I paddled out, I <laughs> felt dirtier than when I went into the water. And um, there was some raunchy smells out there, that's for sure. Try to keep my head above water as much as I can. I think I did good uh, that evening. I don't think I fell off my board, but it's kind of sketchy because there's a lot of things moving in the water, you know. And uh, been hearing about the crocodile that's out there. It's a little eerie, you know, being in a place that you're not familiar with at all. Us being the only ones out there at that time made the, uh, <laughs> made the school a little small for the uh, big guys, you know what I mean? The crocs or whatever that are there just made you an open target. Alan goes, hey, you know, it's going to be great to go get in the water and get all this road dirt off of us. He made that comment, and Jesse's like, yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. And I looked at Jesse and went, mm, you know, I've been to Boca before. You know, the only thing that turns me off is, like, how dirty the water is. You know, and I, I told him, I said, you know, I, we're going to paddle out and it's going to be wet, but I think you're probably going to want to take more of a shower after you get out of the water than you did before you got in the water. To me, actually, this time, you know, the wave quality wasn't near what I've, I've gotten at Boca. I mean, there were still a couple hundred yard rides. I got my one good wave that was worth it. That's it. Probably will be better at low tide, maybe in the morning. Um, 
I should have stayed out when I, I paddled in, and those seams got me, and the waves got better. So, so much for local knowledge. Yeah. We're sitting there on the beach, we're figuring out, we're trying to go, oh, we're going to go to Tamarindo at night. I don't know, I think it's a, like a five hour drive. You know, so we try to organize a hotel and figure out all this stuff, and someone looked over and goes, well, hey, there's the Surf Inn. You know, it's just a couple little cabina type of place, mom and pop's little deal, and uh, he goes, let's just stay right there. It's right on the beach. And all of us hem hawed, and mm, we should go here, we should do that. Um, whatever we decide, it'll, it's going to be going with the flow. And, you know, we won't regret it. For all you guys who want to come to Boca Barranca, there is a 10 foot croc out here. The Surfing, fantastic place. They really treated us like family. I mean, they really did. It was a uh, family away from home. You know, very, very friendly. The food was phenomenal. It was home cooked food. The hospitality, the air conditioned room, being right on the river and everything, it was, it was a beautiful experience. You're only going to get in that one section. I want to find that one wave in the ocean that's going through all the sections so I can capture all that. Everybody's eyes see everything so differently. No. And since we see it differently, we won't ride the wave in the same place. You know, it's like, I might look at your style and or Lance Carson or somebody and go, oh, okay, it's like this. But that's how I see it. That's how I put my body. I don't care if I you know, mask him and like, you know, Jesse's hands are like that, I'm gonna do a drop knee exactly like that. I don't not look the same. No matter what, it's on my own style. Everybody has their idea of their perfect way. That's There's no right. doubt about it. Yep, that's, that's what turns do, what turns one person on may not turn the next one on. choice about your style. That's right. That's the beauty of That's surfing. If you, you, if you try to alter your style, you're going to look ridiculous. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. That's right. That's what you're, you're, you're given or not given. No, you can't. <laughs> you have to be yourself in anything you do. Surfing or life in general, just be yourself. Yep. If you be yourself, Somehow you end up on trips with really cool people like this, <laughs> and there's great food, and there's, you know, we get, we stumbled onto everything that we've got here. And, and look at this, fresh squeezed pineapple with right. the seeds in it. I hope those are seeds. <laughs> there's something floating in there. <laughs> we got our waves this morning. We're going to get our waves in the next few days, even if we miss tonight. Supposedly a swell on the way. This is what I've heard. Could be a bad rumor. We see lots of rental cars going the opposite way. Probably wrong. All right, cool. Have fun, guys. Nice to meet you. Every wave I catch and how I manipulate the wave is all to base myself and how I turn and why I turn and when I turn. The only reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing is to tie myself to go to the nose. That's it. I work myself, because I'm on a nose rider. If I was on a board that was different, you know, not a nose rider, you know, and I was on something that turned easier because it's made to turn easier, this and that, for whatever reasons, I would definitely be trying to switch up and do other things because that's what the board is made to do.
we're okay. We make a left here at the bridge. We'll be in the water in three hour, two hours. Three hours, two three, hours? Three hours. Three hours, yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, tamarindo. Tamarindo. They're fiadoras que usan uh, tablas largas, longboards. Largas. Uh -huh. Son diferentes. Yeah, baby! Sí, eso, ellos son un poco loco. Vivo en Pavones, Playa Pavones. Playa Pavones. Pavones. Sí. Uh, Las olas la más suerte, largas del muchas mundo. Suertes. Mucha suerte. Mucha suerte. Mucha hmm. suerte. Yeah. That's why I said. You, know, you, you don't know what's going on you're, in here. You say future, I'm lucky. Your future old is this old future. You've done enough in your entire past. I know, but that's in the past. I know. I'm not going to have, I want more fun in the future. You guys may look at me and go, well, he, this is an old guy and he's had all the fun he's going to have. I got news for you. I have plans. I have plans to have a lot of fun. A lot of nose rides. And you know the other stuff that I'm talking about. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I'll work my way in as the sage. Is the sage. The sage. That sounds really yeah. terrible. Sage. Yeah. Uh, I'll yeah. be in a lotus position somewhere. You guys will come and ask me questions. You, go. and I, you guys got to start on rum. The sage is rum? telling you you're drinking the you wrong stuff. We should get some rum. I'm going to go get some rum. Yeah. It, it, thanks for reminding me. You know, this scotch thing is, is too gringo. We're about nine degrees north latitude. You're not drinking scotch here anymore, pal. Run set an hour ago. And a little water. I've been to Tamarindo before, and it hadn't, it, it's been eight years, six, eight, maybe even ten years. And the build-up made me sick, really. It lost a lot of the Costa Rican feel to it. It was dirty. You know, it was beautiful at the same time. I couldn't even really recognize any of the place. It's gotten too crowded. It actually warmed us up maybe for going home, because it's like we started out in Pavonis where it was natural Costa Rica and still not quite built up and you could, you could experience the rawness of Costa Rica. When you came up to Tamarindo, it seems like it's all handed to you on American plate. It's frightening. It's less of an adventure when it's like this. It was nice to just walk out and, uh, gee, I want to go catch a couple waves, and you just go out and boom, the water's just so warm, you don't have to get into a wetsuit, you don't have to get ready, you don't have to do anything, just grab a pair of baggies and, and you're bored.
Marbella was fun. Uh, had a little bit of power. It was breaking, you know, almost maybe 50 yards from shore. There was a couple of times I actually caught a wave and uh, rode a little too far and ended up rolling onto the sand a couple different times. That was a really, really fun wave. Even though it was beach break and it was, you know, peaks were here and there and everywhere. If you sit in a spot long enough, I think the peak you would find a good one, um, which I know I did. Surfed there before. I've gotten really lucky. I knew it had the potential to throw a really good wave close to the beach. It looked really good. showed up uh, after getting stuck in the river, thanks to me, and uh, it was already on shore when we got there, it was shitty. It was bitching to, to pull up to the beach and look around and see everything, to see how vast the beach was, with kind of nobody on it. And all these places and neat things to explore, and that's all about Costa Rica, you know? I mean, I could live in the jungles and explore the jungles and go surf every once in a while. You know? There's so much to see, so much to do. Welcome to Coconut Harry's, Puerto Vida. Coconut Harry, um, yeah, he was a nice guy. Well, if anybody like technically knows what the, you know, the word coconut means, that you're white on the inside and tan on the outside. Basically, Mr. Harry is tan on the outside from living down in Costa Rica, and he's a white boy on the inside from the south. My Spanish, I've, I've, I've risen to sub-kindergarten. He had his accent, he had everything. He had a, an unbelievable setup. Just from the, the architecture and the, and the craft of, of our surf shop to the items that he had in it. No, he was a nice guy. He seemed to have had it dialed in there. and um, People liked him, apparently. Good job, Coconut Harry. You don't have the luxuries of, of your local shell or mobile or whatever. It, it was cool. You know, I, I dug it. I, I dug doing the whole, you know, gasoline can into the tank thing. And yeah, it was, it was cool to watch. It's like 15 degrees cooler, 20 degrees cooler. I mean, I'm cold. I've got goosebumps starting to happen.
Yeah, the volcano was um, just an awesome site. You know, you see pictures of a volcano and, and you know, it looks cool, whatever, but um, there's definitely an energy here that I think uh, we all felt. There's just a power. I mean, you can't describe in words um, each of us probably individually felt. Pura Vida. It was a beautiful scenic drive. The roads were beautiful. It was something that we needed. Like yesterday, you guys were getting tens and yeah. solid vibes. I couldn't find a section to get a nose ride on. And I'm, it's again, it's, uh, this happened the other day at uh, Boca Branca. You know, I'm going, what's the difference between those guys and me? And I, you know, I, you can rationalize it up to a point and say, well, they happened to get a good wave when I didn't, but it isn't that. It's like surfing is that, a lot of it's that instinct of getting the right wave at the right time and knowing. 20 meters yep. down the line, you're going to be able to go to the nose. You're not even thinking of it when you take off, but something instinctively in you knows that there's going to be a sweet spot in that wave. No, that, and you're no. setting up for it way before, and like I'm ignorant of that, say, you know, I'll find my little spots, but it has to be a good wave for me, yeah. and I'll find the nose ride. But you guys just, are, right. you're on the nose, it's, and I, you know, I don't see where the, the sweet spot is. Surfing every day to me, you know, I'm, I'm learning, I'm growing in surfing itself. You know, you learn to deal with different situations, different types of people. The surf here was, was actually very user friendly, you know, aside from the random rock here and there that you had to watch out for. But for the most part, the water's warm, the locals were nice, you know, if, if you treated their, their spot with respect. You know, and that's like any other spot you go to, whether it's in California, Florida, or wherever. You know, if you're traveling to some place and you treat that spot with respect, you know, you're going to get a warm welcome. Go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> Every day you're learning something. If you are a surfer and you want to get better, every surfer wants to ride better. You know, I mean, it'd be it'd be dumbfounding to see that somebody would just want to stand up and ride straight to the beach every day. You know, after they catch the feeling and they know what it's like to maybe do a turn. So every day, you know, either watching the videos from what we've done or just knowing what I've done in the water, I try to better myself by what I know and what I've seen and, and what I'm doing and. Uh, you know, try to make something better for myself out of it. You know, I want to see myself do something else on video or, or, you know, something exciting. So, you know, every day you're learning something, you got to like, you got to put your mind to it. Surfing something where you go out in the water and you forget about all the inhibitions and all the bullshit that go on in life and, and uh, you surf. You know, you're standing on the wave, you don't think about all the bullshit. 
you know, we surf, but at the same time, to get better, you, you gotta like analyze things and uh, see how you can get better. And uh, every day surfing and every day on this trip, I grab something um, that I would, you know, take back to my arsenal and my repertoire and uh, see if I couldn't add something to it and make it a little better.